guys, what's up? It's Joe Reddy from Reddy's Rides. I'm back here at Walker Ford and we have another new release. This is the all new 2020 Ford Explorer. This one is at the limited trim level. Now, if you've been watching the channel, you would know I've already been to Walker Ford and did the ST version, but I wanted to bring this one specific to you because remember, for 2020, we got a totally different redesign, plus this is sitting on a new chassis where all that power is going to the rear wheels. Now, the ST trim level that I did, that one is all-wheel drive, so I specifically wanted one that did not have all-wheel drive and I definitely wanted to bring this 2020 Explorer because remember, Explorer has been around. That first generation was the early 1990s. Since then, the Explorer has been such a mainstay to Ford's SUV lineup and really the go-to today for people who want three-row capability and are not wanting that big, big, big size of the Expedition. I think as we go through this, this may change your mind. If you haven't been a Ford Explorer lover, you may fall in love with this one. So let's go ahead dive into this 2020. Right off the bat, the first thing you should see that's changed is gonna be the headlights. I like the way that they designed the headlight housing, and I really think it's great how they blacked everything out inside, except for a little bit of chrome. Very, very nice. Now, as you drop down, you do have these functional air curtains on the side. Air is gonna hit the front and go down into this actual vent down the side of the vehicle. Very smart to use flat black, not a bunch of fake vents all over the place. Grill, totally redesigned grill. I like the flat silver with the chrome bits. You have a front facing camera, which I think is almost like mandatory on these types of vehicles. And I just like all the open slots in the front of the vehicle, especially down low because they went flat black with some flat silver. And this design really gives it a nice off-road look to it, even though we know I know and you know that a lot of these are not gonna see like dirt trail roads, but very, very nice upscale look to the redesign of the Explorer. Now, as we come around on this beautiful hood, Onyx Black, check out these wheels. This is, like I said, limited trim. You're getting these 20 inch hand polished wheels. Love the style. And I think it just pops so great with this color. Very smart how they took the flat black all the way around the fender well, even the Explorer name in the headlight housing. Those are the details I know that you like to see. Want to just focus on this hood one last time before we go down the rest. I just love the body lines. You got that recessed section in the center. You'll see when we take it for a spin, you get a nice view over it. Very nicely done. Now with the side mirrors at the limited trim level, you do have LED, nice slim LED lights built into the mirrors, your turn singles. And then I think it was smart to not do a bunch of chrome bits around the window frame. Everything's flat black. You have nice polished aluminum roof rails. I like a little bit of shiny bit on the door handle and the silver trim along the bottom with some flat black, great body lines in this Explorer. Now, as we continue down to the back, here's where I really think they did something smart. I love the shape of this rear quarter window. Great size, gonna allow a lot of light into the back of the vehicle. But if you notice how they went with the black and then even brought the gloss black into this extension for aerodynamics off of the side of the vehicle. Looks really nice. You get a, a, a nice size roof spoiler coming off the back. And then really with the back, the tail on the business, I think they hit the nail on the head. Love the Explorer, not a bunch of letters stuck on. It's a nice chrome trim. LED taillights look great, especially when you step on the brakes, and I'll show you that early, uh, later in the video. Really great design. And then as we drop down, you'll first of all notice the EcoBoost badge. This one has the 2.3 liter EcoBoost, 300 horsepower. You do get dual exhaust, but here's where I got to zonk it. The exhaust pipe is a dummy. They actually come out the bottom here. The opening is right there. You see how my finger just got dirty there? Supposedly, what the engineers at Ford says is that there was gases getting into the back of the tailgate. My question is, why didn't they design a better rear tailgate so those gases wouldn't go back there? But from a look standpoint, definitely looks on the money, and I'm gonna give it a thumbs up from a looks, but functionality, I mean, come on, really? But compared to last year, I think they really are moving in the right direction. But why don't we go ahead, pop the hood, and check out that 2.3 liter EcoBoost and see what kind of power we're talking about. Right, guys, we got the hood popped on the 2020 
Ford Explorer. This one, like I said, is that limited trim. We're gonna zonk automatically off the bat the prop rod. I don't think this is necessary anymore, especially on a vehicle at this price point. But underneath the hood, what are we looking at? We are looking at that 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine. When we say EcoBoost, we're talking about turbocharged, 300 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. If you're comparing this to last year's Sport, Explorer Sport, you're looking at 10 more horsepower, 55 more pound-feet of torque. If you're wondering about MPGs, 21 in the city, 28 in the highway, this is the real-wheel drive platform. All power going through a 10-speed automatic transmission. If you're wondering, hey, how much can I tow with this, Joe? You're looking around 5,300 pounds. Now, what I do like is underneath the hood, not a bunch of plastic. I can clearly see the engine cover. And then you have this massive strut tower brace that's going to stiffen up the front end of this car. And I'm telling you, when we take it for a spin, this Explorer is going to outhandle any 2019 Explorer, guaranteed. But why don't we go ahead, fire it up, and see what it sounds like. All right, guys, interior time in the 2020 Explorer. If you're probably wondering, I'm sure you are, you're probably saying, Joe, I'm digging so far the Explorer, how much? This limited, the way that you see it option is $50,500. Let's see what we get for that MSRP to the door panel. So door panels, there's a lot of black material, but I do like the leather on the armrest the nice um, gray contrast stitching, and I'm really digging the silver speaker cover by the handle to open up the door. That really gives it a nice finished look. There is the B&O sound system, upgraded sound system in this, which is gonna give you a nice clear audio. As we transition from the door, which has soft materials, same soft materials on the top portion of the dash. I like the shape of the AC vents with a little bit of silver trim, and then there's this like, faux wood design going on here. Now, I like the way it looks. I just don't like some of this fit and finish. That, to me, is a zonk. These need to be a little closer together. Now, a lot of you that saw my ST video, the 2020 Explorer ST, you didn't like the 10-inch vertical screen. This has more conventional 8-inch screen. I like the placement, and one thing that's really great is you got this cubby right here to put your phone since the screen isn't up and down. If you have not seen my ST video, wait until the end of this review. I'll have the link for that. Start stop button is placed right here. I'm not really loving the placement. I guess there's just not a lot of other areas to put it, but it's kind of like jammed up in this little spot here. I don't really love the hard plastic, so I am gonna zonk this area, this harder plastic, but I do like the infotainment system. You do have dual climate, nice, clean, and crisp, clear graphics, and the sync system works great. Radio controls, you got your camera set up, look at this. 360 degrees, of course, you're gonna get the 360 co-pilot from Ford with all the safety features and whatnot. We could go ahead and check out, there's out the front. You can see how, look at that, nice panoramic look. Really digging the functionality of the cameras on this Explorer. As we transition down, dual climate control, heated seats, heated steering wheel, and ventilated, ventilated seats. That's how it should be at this price point. Silver trim, nice silver trim on the center console. My question is, will this get scratched up? We'll have to wait and see. What I do like though is, is you press this down, voila, it opens up. It just takes a couple hits. Third, third push is the charm. Nice cubby area. You have a 12 volt and you have two USBs in here. Plenty of room. You could put a couple phones in there. You could probably fit about 15 phones in this storage area, which is really nice. Close that back up, really nice. Rotary dial for that 10-speed automatic transmission. I like the brushed aluminum. Two cup holders, a place for your phone. You have electric e-brake. And then this, you actually have drive mode. So you could toggle through different drive modes, which I'll show you that when you come to the business side of things. This shuts off that pesky start-stop feature. Armrest. Love the height. Love the material. You got wireless charging. Look at this, wireless charging. Now, somebody brought up a good idea, a good question. Won't your phone, if you had a jam on your brakes, won't your phone go flying? 
I guess you'll have to find out. There is a nice lip though to hold it in place. I just, that's something you would have to test on your own time. Open this up, great tray. You can put pencils, highlighters, markers, crayons, and then very nice deep storage area in there with a 12 volt. Close it up, seats. Love the material, love the color, love the stitching. Ventilated and heated, like I said, very supportive. That bottom portion comes out a nice far distance to really hug your hamstrings. I like the way the back is. And you can see I'm six feet tall and there's plenty of room in this 2020 Ford Explorer for me. Why don't you come on over to the business end though and I'll show you behind the wheel of this new Explorer. All right guys, business end behind the wheel of this 2020 Limited. I do like the seating position, full electric assist, both on the bottom and the back, which is really nice. You can really get it to form to the shape of your body steering wheel tilting telescoping of course love the design love the feel the thickness of it a little bit of silver shiny bits on the bottom which is very nice especially the way how it integrates into the bottom portion here buttons i think it's smart to go flat black they won't leave any fingerprints i know how you guys feel about that dash this one does not have the optional uh 12 inch digital display but you do have a very good just looking display in the center, tell you all sorts of different information, MPGs, all that. Watch this when I go through the different drive modes. This is when it gets really nice. Normal, you have slippery, you have trail, and there's also a sport as well, including eco. So eco, leaves, green, nature. And then with this one, like I said, you could tow a good amount of weight with it, over 5,000 pounds. So that's gonna allow you to select the mode specific to whatever type of driving you're doing. And that's gonna adjust shift points. It's gonna adjust how the engine uh, you know, produces the power and all that. That to me is really smart to tailor the whole driving experience to exactly your needs. Let's go ahead though and check out are the needs of your passengers being met in that mid row. All right guys, mid row time of the 2020 Ford Explorer Limited. One thing that is a little bit of a zonk is it's just really dark in here without the optional Vista sunroof or anything like that. It is a little dark, but I do like the material. Even on the back, uh, the mid row seats, same great leather. I like the thickness of the armrest. Finally, somebody has listened to me and on this captain's chair, you do have a very nice thick armrest and the seats are very supportive. The bottom portion and the back and the armrest is great. On the back of the seat, I know a lot of you like the harder plastic, especially if you have kids. So you do have the harder plastic leather little pouch here that is felt lined. On the command center, which let me go ahead and slide this back a little bit. Command center, you have rear AC controls. You have two USBs, a home power source, and the seats are heated. Nice little cubby area while your device is being charged. You have a little command center here with cup holders and all sorts of organizers. But you can see I'm six feet tall and plenty of headroom. The AC does dump in the ceiling. So I know some of you don't like it, some of you do like it, but you do have your AC vents. Like I just showed you on that one, you do have sliding seats. Look at this, you can sit here. Can you imagine if you have a kid just doing this? Mom, when are we gonna get there? But you do have sliding seats. Of course, if you have sliding, you have reclining. So very comfortable. Why don't we go ahead, let's check out that back row and see if a grown man can fit back there. All right, guys, time to check out that third row. Me being six feet tall, we'll see how a grown man will fit in the back. Some of these three rows, it gets a little cramped. Now to get into the back, Ford made it very easy. You're just gonna push this button right at the top. Look at that, slides forward, and that's gonna give you access. Before I climb in though, I wanna just point out very smart how Ford added the plastic foot guards down here because that's where you're gonna be putting your feet each and every time. So we're gonna go ahead and climb on in once you're in, it's actually not too shabby. I'm going to flip up the headrest here, and there's actually a pretty good amount of room. Now, this is only two seats back here. That's the particular setup on this model. I guess my big gripe on many of these third rows is that the plastic that's back here on the armrest, it would be nice to have an armrest that has some softer material, but you have cup holders. And then my other big zonk is going to be no USB for the third row. You have your connectivity all the way up here, but at least one USB I think is mandatory, especially because you and I both know who's gonna be sitting back here. Probably your kids, and when their devices go dead, that's when your life is gonna become a life of misery. So 
That's one thing I would like to fix. Let's go ahead though. We're gonna check out that cargo area and see what kind of space we have back there. All right guys, tail end of the business, probably the most important part of any SUV. How much junk can we put in the cargo area of the 2020 Explorer? You press the button, nice electric assist, and to be honest with you, it's on the quicker side of things. Now, a lot of times people wanna see, hey, Joe, can I put anything back here with the third row up? As you can see, we have the third row up, and I'm telling you, you could get your stroller back here, no problem, lay it down. Before we put down the seats, I wanna just show you this really nice compartment that Ford has integrated into the back of the Explorer. Nicely done, it's a great place. If you need to hide a gift from your wife, you could put it back here. Just don't let her see this video or she'll know that you could put stuff back there. I'm gonna swing around and show you this nice little command center. So LED lights, nice little 12 volt. You wanna put this row down, you actually have a choice. You could go one at a time or you just hit the center one. Look at that. And it's on the quicker side. So I'm very, very impressed by that. They fold nice and flat, which is great. If you're wondering, well, Joe, how do you get down that mid row? This is where you gotta go for a little walk. So I'm gonna come over here. We're gonna pull up on the lever, flat. And obviously you can imagine if I pull the other lever on that one, that one's gonna be flat and it's gonna be able to take a piece of plywood, whatever you got and just slide it, or maybe that big screen TV. You want a nice 80 inch TV, plenty of room in here. Don't forget, hide the gift underneath. If you're ready though, I'm ready. Let's go ahead and take this 2020 Explorer for a spin. All right guys, we're in the 2020 Ford Explorer Limited. Remember, all Explorers are set up for rear wheel drive. Let's go ahead and get on that loud pedal. 10 speed does the magic. Quite surprisingly, nice acceleration coming from this Explorer. Now remember, Explorer is about 200 pounds lighter than the outgoing 2019 model. Plus, I'm liking the layout of the interior. Um, I know if you have seen my 2020 Explorer ST, a lot of you were on the fence of the 10 inch vertical screen. This has your traditional eight inch screen. I like the placement, I like the layout, and I'm glad I'm very happy how they attached it to the actual dash. It's not too high, it's not too low. There's some cars we've been in where it seems like it's been stuck on with bubble gum and some duct tape or something. This very nicely placed. Now what's interesting um, that I noticed is that because you do have the smaller screen and it is horizontal, there's a nice little cubby here for your cell phone right next to the start stop button um, to fire up your Explorer. So that is very smart engineering. I'm still not 100% sold on this plastic around the radio controls and the AC controls, but at the limited trim level, you are getting heated and ventilated seats. I'm also liking the silver rather than just straight up black plastic. Now, time will only tell how this will wear, but sitting here right now um, looks really, really great especially with the rotary dial. At first I was against rotary dials, but it does free up the space in here. And that's one thing is you'll notice great amount of room up here, shoulder room, the whole nine yards. Looking out across the hood is very, very good visibility. Eight pillars have been pulled pretty far back. Steering wheel is great. Like I showed you earlier, we have driving mode. So you have that nice, beautiful, super clear digital display there. We're in normal. You could go from normal to slippery. Slippery when wet, what album? Tell me, Bon Jovi. If you guessed that, you get an extra star for today. So there's your slippery setup. Next we have trail. No, we're not talking about trail mix. We're talking about if you were to take this down some type of dirt trail road, different terrain obviously. And then the final one is going to be, um, wait, I think I skipped one, hold on, we gotta go back. All right, here we go. Let's start from the beginning. We got tow and haul, which is specifically set up for the Explorer. Now we're gonna go sport. That's when you're ready to race your Explorer. If you wanna help the environment that particular day, you could go into eco mode, keep going, normal. Really, who is normal anymore? But there is a normal mode on the Explorer Limited. Slippery, we've already talked about that one. I love the graphics, those graphics are cool. And trail, so very nicely done how they have it to where you could tailor whatever mood you're in or whatever the terrain you're in. And what that is gonna adjust, it's gonna adjust shift, uh, adjust shift points, it's gonna adjust power delivery. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm feeling kind of racy. I'm gonna put it into sport mode. You can see everything turns red, just like so many other colors uh, in other cars with the red 
You got that checkered flag that comes out. I do like the instrumentation. Instrumentation is so easy to see at a glance. Lots of usable information as well. You could toggle through. There's your air pressure and all the tires. You can get into your radio controls. The only thing that's a bummer is you can't get the navigation to show up in this center screen. And that would be a really nice feature to have, especially because it looks so damn good. Digital display for your coolant and your fuel. And then of course it's telling you whether you're in drive, neutral, all that kind of stuff. Yes, it does tell you when you have low fuel, which is what we have right now, but we're gonna keep on trucking here on Rady's Rides. Quiet. One thing I really noticed, I think more so over the last Explorer, is that it's even more quiet inside the cabin. They really raise the bar on the type of materials being used and also the fit and finish. Now there are a few points on the interior that I have to zonk um, as I get on the loud pedal here to pass these cars, but a little, the gaps are kind of large here and there, but I don't know if you could hear that. It does hold the gear in sport mode. It holds the gear so that when you're ready to get back on throttle, you're already there, which is really, really nice. Let's see how it handles rear wheel drive. Good feedback coming from the steering wheel, tipping into this turn, very nice and balanced. Obviously we got to yield to traffic, but I like the feedback from the steering wheel. I like the steering wheel itself. It has very, very nice leather. I like the padding and the vehicle shifts very, very smoothly, which is great. But going back to what I said, there are a couple places where the gaps could be, I feel, brought in a little bit closer to one another. But other than that, I am liking the direction where they went from 2019 to 2020. And you know, we will be bringing you a comparison from Walker Ford between the two very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. And at the end of this video, I'll have the Explore ST link so you could check out that one if you wanna see what 400 horsepower and all wheel drive feels like in this 2020 Explorer. Let's go ahead and see how she handles in this left-hand bend on throttle here. Tip it in, remember, rear-wheel drive biased, I love it. Very nice, handles great, I'm telling you, these handle so much better than that front-wheel drive setup from the outgoing Explorer. And you know, you're getting a decent sound coming from the hood. Could it be a little throatier? Sure, but remember, you do have other engine options besides the setup on this particular one but very, very smooth. Everything is easy to get to, which is great, and visibility is awesome. Plus, you got the three-row capability, so you'll be able to pack this thing up and take people to Walt Disney or whatever, and everybody's gonna be comfortable no matter where you're sitting. One last time, on the brakes, tip it in, very nice. This thing handles so well. I'm very, very impressed with what the Ford engineers have done. Even at highway cruising speeds, very, very comfortable, very, very smooth, and definitely I highly recommend you gotta get down to Walker Ford, take one of these for a drive because it's gonna surprise you. Not only the redesigned stru uh, structure, the chassis, but also having that power go, to the go into the rear wheels really livens up the whole driving experience. But we're gonna go ahead, hopefully this was enough to showcase the Limited. We're gonna get back to Walker Ford, so I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been a wonderful time here at Walker Ford with the 2020 Explorer Limited. This is the direction that the SUV market is going when it comes to your three row. Has Ford nailed this one? Had they hit it out of the park? That's really for you to decide. Definitely wanna get down to Walker Ford and take one of these for a spin. Also have to thank of course, Frank Walker, Weston Walker, Tracy, Benji, Mark, Austin, Jason, everybody here at the dealership is so accommodating, making sure that we get the latest Ford products just for you. If these are the types of things that we like to see on Rady's Rides, leave a comment in that comment section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Rady's Rides family. If you wanna help us here on the channel, keep making great content just for you, click that link in the description takes you to spread shirt, get yourself some merch. Every little bit helps. Speaking of every little bit, there's nothing little on Tom Moshner. Big Guns McGee, big legs, big arms. He's working that camera like a champ. He's back after his sabbatical. He went on a pilgrimage and now he's returned stronger than before. Thank you, Tom, for all your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.